Grandpa stole his first buggy in 1892. Uh, I met your grandma pig slopping in 46. Oh, every Christmas we'd visit my Uncle Fred in prison. And welcome to America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth, on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out and teach you how to find your ancestors and find inspiring guests. And we've got so many of them today. First of all, we're starting out with Gretchen Jorgensen in about 10 minutes. She is a genetic genealogist with our friends at Legacy Tree Genealogists. And we're going to talk about the new beta tool on Ancestry.com. It's called Through Lines, and it's creating magic for a lot of researchers. And you're going to want to hear Gretchen's take on it and some little secrets to make it work for you. Plus, later in in the show, Tyler Staley is going to be here. He's with Roots Tech London. Of course, the first one is coming up in October. A guest has already been announced, a guest speaker and performer, and you're going to want to hear about why you might want to be there and what you can learn while you're there. And then at the back end of the show, our Ask Us Anything segment with Dr. Scott Woodward, a DNA pioneer who I've known for many, many years, and he's going to answer a listener question about how far back you can prove somebody's paternity by using DNA. And the answer might surprise you. Hey, if you haven't signed up for our weekly Genie newsletter yet, you can do so at ExtremeGenes.com or on our Facebook page. Would love to have you be part of that community. And, of course, we give you a, a blog every week and links to old and current podcasts and to stories that you're going to find of interest as a genealogist. Right now, let's head off to Boston, Massachusetts, and my good friend David Allen Lambert, the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society in American Ancestry. Ancestors.org. Hello, David. Hey, how are things out your way, my friend? Just grand and glorious, and I, we got a lot of stories to cover today in Family Histoire News. I'll tell you, our friend Cece Moore is at it again, and she might be going to court, but not for something wrong she did, for something she helped solve. Yeah. That murder case that we talked about a while back, where there's uh, two young people back in the 80s, Jay Cook and his girlfriend, Tanya Van Hoylenborg, that were found dead. The DNA has matched, and now because of uh, Cece's great work in this case, she may be brought to trial. Yeah, she's going to be a witness if the prosecutor brings her up, and a lot of people are expecting she will be, because this is the first murder trial of somebody who's been fingered by using genetic genealogy and DNA. And a lot of people are thinking this is one of those court cases that could go all the way to the Supreme Court. So there are national media outlets covering this trial, and uh, Cece may testify, and it's going to be very interesting to see what the rulings are as this thing moves forward. I tell you, her great work in genealogy and genetic genealogy just shows that she's able to bring closure to people, not just finding their ancestors, but finding the killers of their family. Yep. A Connecticut librarian's getting into the cold case research as well. Rebecca Heath made a discovery last October after being concerned about murders committed by Terrence Rasmussen, who killed three children back in 1985 and 2000 up in New Hampshire. This researcher used her own sleuthing skills to help determine the identities of these victims from so long ago. Yeah, this is very cool. She reached out across the Internet looking for people who were missing family members. And somebody described some people that might have fit these murder victims. She kind of put it on the back burner for a while when she didn't get an immediate response and then came back to it and made contact and then came to realize that the last person that this family family member had been in touch with was a husband named Rasmussen. And so that put it together and she reached out to California police who were already working on some DNA matches and put the whole thing together. So uh, really well done. Well, I'll tell you, sometimes watching TV, you know, you find some great news, but how about when you get to see your third great grandfather appear on the television screen? And this is what happened to Anwan Brown, a resident of Greenwood, Mississippi. He already had this old photograph in his family Bible of this gentleman named Joshua Tartbutton, who was his third great grandfather. But now he saw him on television. 
Yeah, this, the, this picture apparently was in a museum there in Mississippi, and Anwan was already aware that his third grade had been an enslaved person, and now he was able to find out more information about him, and now he's a full-fledged genie as a result of this experience, and of course was uh, thrilled to see another copy of his ancestor's photograph in this museum in Mississippi, because he saw it on TV. Isn't that crazy? It really is, and so his ancestor, born back in 1846, was born into slavery in South Carolina, but now he's able to connect the story right with it, so it's a a wonderful addition to his own family history, and obviously there's another picture out there, which just goes to show you, if you have an unidentified photograph, you never know when it might show up, so stay tuned on your local TV. Out in Colorado Springs, 101-year-old Walter Clock, a veteran of World War II, in fact, an Air Force bombardier pilot, was part of the graduation ceremony for his grandson, Joseph, who just graduated as an officer from the U.S. Air Force Academy. Talk about going full circle. Isn't that great? And, and Walter was actually part of commissioning him as an officer, and he traveled 1,500 miles from his home, which is in Amherst, New York, to be part of this thing. And I guess the entire academy gave him a huge standing O, and they just all said this is one of the best days ever in the history of the family. It really is a wonderful story. Well, I'll tell you, I always like to shine the blogger spotlight onto someone that we haven't heard about, but this one you probably have heard of, Blaine Bettinger. Blaine Bettinger has a wonderful blog that you may have never tried. It's called thegeneticgenealogist.com, where he talks about all sorts of things in the industry and gives some great tips in regards to genealogy and how DNA can help you. There is nobody better. He does a great job, absolutely. Well, that's all I have from Beantown. But just remember, if you're not a member of NEHGS, the New England Historic Genealogical Society welcomes you to be a member. Just go to our website, AmericanAncestors.org, and you can save $20 by using the checkout code EXTREME for Extreme Genes. All right. Thank you so much, David. And uh, coming up next, I'm going to talk to Gretchen Jorgensen. She is a DNA specialist with Legacy Tree Genealogists. And we're going to talk about that new beta program you've been seeing on Ancestry. Maybe you haven't played with it yet. It is amazing. It's called Through Lines. What are the pluses? What might be the minuses? You're going to hear coming up next in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Legacy Tree Genealogists is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've worked with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client-rated genealogy firm. Call us toll free at 1-800-818-1476 or register online to get a free estimate. Right now, you can save up to $100 on professional genealogy research. But hurry, this offer expires at the end of the month. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com slash blog. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. Roots Tech 2019 may be over, but the Family History Fund doesn't have to end. Visit RootsTech.org to view recorded content from the event. Rewatch the inspiring keynote addresses from celebrity speakers Patricia Heaton, Saru Briley, and Jake Shimabukuru. A number of classes are also available to view for free from popular genealogists such as Miko Cleland, Diane Southard, and Valerie Elkins. Want access to even more content from Roots Tech? Purchase the virtual pass and get access to 18 recorded conference sessions. Watch playbacks from any device from the comfort of your own home. Enjoy exclusive content from popular presenters like Kenyatta Berry, D. Joshua Taylor and Lisa Louise Cook. Purchase your all access virtual pass at rootstech.org for only $129. Roots Tech 2019 may be over but it lives on through the Roots Tech virtual pass. Download yours today. Visit rootstech.org to learn more. 
Genies, it's Fisher with a thanks and a shout out to members of our Extreme Genes Patron Club. We are blessed to have so many friends of the show supporting Extreme Genes. Monthly contributions start at just a dollar and go up to the cost of a couple of really tasty large smoothies with added fruit. Just $8. Patron Club member benefits include early podcast access. And our special bonus podcasts include photo experts, legal experts, DNA specialists, and so many more. You can even get expert advice on specific questions you're struggling with in your family history research. So go to patreon.com slash extreme genes and get signed up. That's patreon.com slash extreme genes. Now, I know those smoothies would taste great but they're not nearly as satisfying as discovering your family. The choice is yours. So get signed up right now. We look forward to helping you out. And thanks for supporting Extreme Genes. Hey, back at it. Talking DNA today on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show, and ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. Tickled to be meeting Gretchen Jorgensen. She's a genetic genealogist for our friends at Legacy Tree Genealogists. And uh, Gretchen, welcome to the show. Nice to have you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. You know, I think all of us are up to our eyeballs in DNA these days and, and helping friends and helping ourselves. And, and it's just so much fun to wake up each day and work on some of these things. And that's why I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about through lines, which is Ancestry's new beta program that everybody's talking about. And it's so much fun. Are you finding or using it a lot in your cases? I am. I have to admit that when it was first announced, I was a bit on the skeptical side. I just wasn't sure what it was going to be able to do or how useful it might be. But once I got in and started playing around with it, I have found it to be really helpful. And it's just making some really impressive connections, in my opinion. I've used it with my own family, and I've used it with client research, and am finding it to be incredibly helpful in in both kinds of situations. You know, I I totally agree with you. And I've just used it this morning, in fact, looking at uh, a case that I'd worked on in my own family. My wife's mother's line, we weren't able to get back past her third grade. And so we did a Y test on her uncle to get, you know, the male-to-male-to-male line and try to figure out if we can connect into a name line. And we got one match at that time. And then a few months later, we had a second match come along. And both of these two matches came from the same couple in Northumberland County, Pennsylvania. And uh, this was pretty cool. They had done some research and found out that, yes, they had had a son named Jesse that fits the rough timeline where this Jesse Burke was supposed to have been born. And then it's a matter of, well, wait a minute, are there autosomal proofs that this was the proper connection? And as I look on through lines now, I can see more and more matches coming in. We've got over a dozen autosomal matches from people who descend at the correct level to indicate the correct relationship to help us to know that we've got the right person. That's really powerful, isn't it? It is. And yeah, I mean, that's a great confirmation point. And I'm betting that some of those matches that you're finding through through lines might not have been that straightforward for you to identify any other way. That's right. The way that the tool works is pretty interesting. It's a kind of a follow-on to Ancestry's DNA circles, which looked at the trees for people that shared DNA with each other and had a tree connection to each other. But through lines also pulls in family trees from the entire Ancestry network of trees including private searchable trees, not just the public trees. So there's so much more data that's being looked at that it really finds things that are, in some cases, pretty obscure. I've been, yeah. <laughs> I've been impressed. And I know in my own family research, some of the connections that it made, I had found and put in a tree that was offline. So it wasn't just reading my tree, but it made connections that took me a very long time to figure out, and boom, they're just there. They're, they're just there. Yeah, I had this happen with another person who came in as a descendant of my third great-grandparents, and I would have never found this person. She only had uh, grandparents' names on her tree, and she didn't have anything other than a name, which was fairly common there, 
I would have never stumbled upon that. But because of the wife's name and everything, the algorithms picked it up and then tied it into my tree of descendants and took it back to the third grade. So I'm looking at her situation and thinking, wow, if she looks at this, she's going to figure out all the way back to her third great grandparents and know who they are and then take their lines, which I developed decades ago that go back hundreds of years from her grandparents, which is an amazingly powerful tool. Yes. Yes, it is. That's pretty incredible, actually. There is a downside to this, though, of course, and and that is the idea that if somebody uses an adoptive family line or something, you can start to believe that that's the bloodline. Correct. The conclusions that through lines makes are only as good as the data in the family trees that it's looking at. And if there are errors in those trees, then... Oh, and there, there are never any of those. No, no, I'm sorry. Yes. I shouldn't have even said that. <laughs> um, you know, then you may get some results that don't quite make sense. And as I'm sure you've observed as well, if someone publishes a family tree, they tend to get copied and copied and copied. And if that mm. information is incorrect, then that can spread like wildfire, actually. So, I mean, it's important to verify anything that you find in through lines or a family tree or any other source. And that's just an important part of any genealogy research. But I I view it as a head start. Um, It can give you a lot of clues that would be difficult or time consuming to find otherwise. And then it's much easier to confirm or refute that kind of connection than it is to find it in the first place. Yeah, that's really well said, Gretchen. I'm talking to Gretchen Jorgensen. She is a genetic genealogist with our friends at Legacy Tree Genealogist. And uh, we're talking about this whole new thing with through lines and the pluses and minuses. I remember at Roots Tech, this was announced and a lot of people were like, oh, but it's it's bringing up wrong information. And, And you're absolutely right. I mean, we get so many sources all the time that do turn out periodically to be incorrect, but that's really incumbent upon us to figure that out before before we accept it as gospel, when you look at some of the information that's in there, I'm finding it's getting easier now, don't you, Gretchen, that to correct information that's been copied and copied and copied that takes on that life of its own in the past. It's like, oh, forget it. There's no way it's ever going to get fixed. But more and more people are figuring it out now because I, of things like this. I think so. Yeah. And I think sometimes you'll get lucky and can contact a relative and tell them that their tree is wrong and they'll change it. I actually have had some success with that. And, yeah. But I know that that's perhaps not typical, but I guess publishing the truth is a good way to combat that. If your tree is correct, hopefully somebody will copy you instead of the wrong tree. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Family trees can be erroneous, but so can death certificates, even birth certificates, all kinds yep. of records. That verification step has to be part of the research process. Yeah, I was looking at a thing the other day where the birth certificate gave the name of the parents, which I presume to be accurate, and every DNA clue that I'm getting says that it is accurate. But when he joined the war, World War II, his enlistment record gave the names of his parents, and he gave his father's third wife's first name Mm -hmm. in the record. Mm -hmm. And I thought, see, that could throw anybody off really quickly if you don't know better. Yes, definitely. I have a case in my family of two couples with the same first names and same last name living in the same county for generations and a lot of overlap in the names of their children. And so those couples have been conflated in family trees throughout the years, which, you know, is not surprising. I ended up with a through lines connection to a descendant of the other couple. So the through lines information was not quite correct because it had both Patrick Corrigan's as being the same person. But the interesting thing to note about this is that through lines only makes a connection when you share DNA with someone else. And I do share DNA with this person. And so that, even though it's incorrect, it's still interesting to me because somehow I am related to this person. And that introduces the possibility that these two Patrick Corrigan's may have been related to each other. Oh, wow. Yeah, Yeah. that's something you probably haven't thought about before, right? I mean, kind of vaguely considered, but now this makes it more of a realistic possibility, so it's 
something that I'd like to check out and see if I can find any more there. Yeah, the cousin level, I guess, has to be the question, though, right? I mean, how right. far back? Are you thinking maybe first cousins? That would be kind of my first guess because they were about the same age and I think both natives of Ireland and ended up in the same part of Illinois. So the thought that they are first cousins is not too much of a stretch. Mm -hmm. So Gretchen, you recently did a a great blog with Legacy Tree Genealogist talking about through lines, and uh, you had some interesting observations there. Talk about that a little bit. Okay, well, it was fun to write and it was fun to research it to put it all together. I looked at the family of John Berger, my second great-grandfather, because he's one of my brick walls, and I don't have a lot of information about him. But several of his descendants have tested with ancestry DNA, and they were coming up in through lines. And so I looked at the data for that. And while I didn't directly find out anything about John, that exercise really gave me some great ideas of how I can move forward in that research. I found that when I looked at the list display in through lines, that there was one of his children whose descendants have not tested at all, and other lines where they're pretty underrepresented or they're all fairly distant, and I know that older testers are available. So it kind of helped me put a plan in place of who I might contact to ask them to test, and especially getting some older testers in there, which as I found out, weren't really in the mix as much as I had thought. Interesting stuff. Yeah, I mean, there are all kinds of new things we learned from this, and I'm sure Ancestry, the people there themselves, are figuring out new things about it as well. She's Gretchen Jorgensen, a genetic genealogist with Legacy Tree Genealogist. Thanks so much for the insight, Gretchen. It's been a lot of fun talking to you. Through Lines, by the way, is available through your DNA tab at Ancestry.com, and you'll find it just to the right of where you see your regular results. Just click on that. Make sure you have your beta button on, and you are in. Thanks for joining us, Gretchen, and we'll talk to you again. All right. Thanks so much. And coming up next, I'm going to talk to Tyler Staley. He is one of the key players, of course, with Roots Tech and Roots Tech London. The first one ever is coming up in just a little bit, and he's got some great breaking news for you and information you're going to need to know to take advantage of it. Coming up in five minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Masters' option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. Zap the grandma gap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks.
And welcome back to America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. And as we work our way into the summer, everybody's starting to anticipate the fall and Roots Tech London. And I thought it was about time we checked back in with the marketing manager for Family Search International, my friend Tyler Staley. And Tyler, you're making those announcements again. <laughs> hey Scott, great to great to talk to you. Yes, we are. We have a lot of exciting things coming for Roots Tech London. As you might have seen just last week, we announced Donny Osmond as yes. our first keynote speaker. Yes, the Donster. Is he going to perform too? <laughs> he has to, right? I mean, we he it's not the same if he if he only speaks. So yes, <laughs> to answer your question, we we definitely want him to to perform a few numbers. He'll be speaking about his own family, you know, and his own family history. But he's also got some great music to mix in. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, he he did speak, of course at Roots Tech in Salt Lake City a few years ago and did a great yep. job with it. And I can imagine he's got a lot to share with his uh, European fans and friends. He totally does. We were on a call with him, you know, just before we announced him uh, on our website. And he was telling us about, you know, the majority of his, of his ancestry coming from the British Isles and, and from the United Kingdom. And so he's, he's always felt that special, uh, you know, affinity to the UK. He's performed there many times throughout his career. And it, it's just a second home to him. And so he's, he's excited to be going back. And we're excited to have him. You know, he's passionate about family history, which a lot of people would be surprised to learn about. But he's got a whole page on his website, Donnie.com, about his own family history and the research he's done. So we're really excited to have him. Well, I've known Donnie for many, many years, and, and I know he's he's all about his family. He is. And so that's going to be great fun. Who else have you got coming that you can oh. talk about? Yeah, the other great news we have, you know, as you know, at at Roots Tech, we kind of have that model where there's a keynote speaker every day. So Donnie's the only one that I've got to announce so far, but we have two others that will speak on the Thursday and the Friday of Roots Tech London. And so those announcements will be coming here in the next few weeks. But we also just recently announced all of the entire Roots Tech London schedule. Ooh, that's and good. So, yeah, right. I mean, we, this has been a work in progress. Because <laughs> as you can imagine, we received over 400 class submissions for Roots Tech London. And so our team has just been whittling those down, you know, trying to find the, the best content that we can offer to our attendees that are at Roots Tech. So if you're looking for a one-stop shop to come and have, have classes on anything, right, from DNA research, which we know is huge, especially as you know, and from methodology to how to preserve your own family stories, any of those kind of topics you can find uh, at Roots Tech London. Well, and it's looking like it's very Eurocentric, shall we say. You're going to get a lot of classes there in London that you do not get at the original Roots Tech in Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah, exactly. We've we recognize that, you know, the audience for both of the events are going to be a little bit different, right? And here in the United States, we get more of an American attendee who are interested in different topics. And in Europe, we're anticipating a little bit different. So we're doing our best to customize this event to that audience and to their needs. So I'm scrolling through the schedule, you know, just here and and looking at the, the wide range of, of classes, you know, a tour of the European archives uh, by Miles Meyer. That, that looks like a great one, right? I'm seeing a bunch of classes on Irish research, on Ooh. German methodology. Here's one on how to read German handwriting. You know, we actually even have two classes on tracing your ancestors uh, from India. So we, we have a wide wow. range of, of classes where, we, you know, we recognize that London is truly a melting pot uh, for people from all walks of life and, and diverse backgrounds. And so it's, it's a conference we're hoping we'll speak to a, a wide range of attendees. Well, you know, if you stand at the White Cliffs of Dover, you can see the coast of France. Yep. You know, it's just, just <laughs> across the way. It's almost like Long Island from Connecticut. It's just not that far. Yep. And, and you think about the history of uh, the British Empire and all the countries that kind of flow into that. So, you know, all these countries are so closely connected and all the invasions throughout time. There's, There's yeah. got to be so much interesting material to be uh, had there. And, and most of the instructors, yeah. they are European, are they not? Correct. Yeah, we've worked really hard to, you know, recruit and, and be introduced to the, the top genealogy experts there in, in the UK and throughout Europe. And so we've got a, a wide range of speakers coming to represent those different topics, some from France, a couple from Belgium, uh, obviously a lot from the United Kingdom, a couple from Australia as well. So oh, wow. it's, it's fun to see, you know, the diverse backgrounds that people are coming from here. Oh, well, absolutely. And the connection between Great Britain and Australia, there's, yeah. there's so many ties there, as with Canada, very similar Correct. there. You know, I mean, really, they were all kind of criminal colonies, including our own to some extent in the yep. early years. And yep. and so I would imagine there are a lot of records there that people have never even uh, thought about. 
That, that's the fun part, isn't it? Where you go to something like this and you go, oh, those records exist? Yeah. Oh, I can get them here? Yeah. Oh, I can see that right now, this week? Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think what's even, you know, I was talking with my wife about this, you know, while we're over there, I'm like, hey, you know, after, after Roots Tech ends, it's just a, a short flight to Switzerland, which is where the, the Staley side of my family comes from. Why don't we yeah. go over and, and see our ancestral homeland? So there's something about being, you know, in the country where your ancestors are from or near the country where your ancestors totally. are from. Totally. There's, there's just something that you experience there that you wouldn't experience you, even just in the conference. Yeah, I have done that just for my name line, gone to northern Yorkshire and spent a considerable time not only in the little village, but uh, in the regional archives there. Mm-hmm. And I remember, it, it's funny, you always find just what you're looking for like in the last five minutes before you have to fly out, you know? <laughs> and at least I was able to get images of yeah. those documents and make contacts with people there who could do some further research on my behalf. And it was just it was an experience that was kind of surreal, especially when I went back the second time and took my own children and and gave them that experience. And they still remember it. Yeah. You know, this is the thing. European tracing and education is one thing. But then to take that and immediately put it into action, because this conference is only what, three days, right? Three days. Yep, exactly. So if you're going to spend the time and the money to get over there, boy, put an extra week in there and go have some fun and see these special special places. I totally agree. You know, one of the cool things we're actually doing, uh, we've partnered with the Society of Genealogists, you know, the National Family History Center there in the UK. And at their library, they're actually offering, you know, a few special lectures and a few special tours a couple of days prior to Roots Tech and then a few days after. So if you're interested in staying around and you have ancestry from the UK, you know, go to the SOG, hear some of their lectures, take a tour of the library. It's all free. Wow. You, you can go to SOG.UK and, and see the whole list of events they're planning around Roots Tech London as well. Boy, and you know, it's so fun right now because I think overseas right now, people are catching on fire about this, especially Ireland, where in the yeah. hotels, they're actually having genealogists on staff to work with people to find out where their people were from right there in Ireland. So it's just wow. getting bigger and bigger. And uh, you know, we see that spreading and even DNA in Europe. While it's a little yes. bit tougher, we're, we're finding that uh, more and more people are finding ways to get their <laughs> DNA matches. Yep. So, OK, yep. if people want to find out how to get there, it is October 24th through 26th in Jolly Old London. Where do they go, Tyler? Perfect. Go to rootstech.org slash London. You'll see everything there. You'll see our most recent announcement about Donny Osmond. You'll see a link to see the full schedule. And then there's a bright green register button in the right-hand corner when you're ready. Go ahead and click that and get registered. And we will look forward to seeing as many of, of your listeners there as we can. Well, it's important that you do this fairly soon, too, right? Because those classes do fill up and there are limits. Yeah, exactly. The the cool thing about Roots Tech and the model that we have is that, you know, you don't have to pay for any access to these classes. Everything's included in the price of a registration. So whether you want to purchase a one-day pass or a three-day pass, you get access to everything that happens on that day. So we don't require pre-registration for a class. But like you say, you know, the popular ones do fill up. So we would recommend getting there a couple minutes early. Make sure you have a seat, especially in those popular classes that you can't miss. Yeah, really important because that might be the main purpose of you going over there in the first place. So (laughs) get on those again. Once again, it is rootstech.org slash London. How hard can that be, right? (laughs) We try to make it easy. Yeah, and you do. All right, great stuff. We look forward to the future announcements here, Tyler, because there's so much happening right now. Roots Tech London coming up October 24th through 26th. You want to be a part of that. Get signed up now at rootstech.org slash London. Talk to you again soon, my friend. Thanks, Scott. Good to hear from you. Hey, it's our Ask Us Anything segment, Back to DNA, with Dr. Scott Woodward coming up next in three minutes on Extreme Genes. Roots Tech 2019 may be over, but the Family History Fund doesn't have to end. Visit rootstech.org to view recorded content from the event. Rewatch the inspiring keynote addresses from celebrity speakers Patricia Heaton, Saru Briley, and Jake Shimabukuru. A number of classes are also available to view for free from popular genealogists such as Miko Cleland, Diane Southard, and Valerie Elkins. Want access to even more content from Roots Tech? 
Purchase the virtual pass and get access to 18 recorded conference sessions. Watch playbacks from any device from the comfort of your own home. Enjoy exclusive content from popular presenters like Kenyatta Berry, D. Joshua Taylor and Lisa Louise Cook. Purchase your all-access virtual pass at rootstech.org for only $129. Roots Tech 2019 may be over, but it lives on through the Roots Tech Virtual Pass. Download yours today. Visit rootstech.org to learn more. Genies, it's Fisher with a thanks and a shout out to members of our Extreme Genes Patron Club. We are blessed to have so many friends of the show supporting Extreme Genes. Monthly contributions start at just a dollar and go up to the cost of a couple of really tasty large smoothies with added fruit. Just $8. Patron Club member benefits include early podcast access. And our special bonus podcasts include photo experts, legal experts, DNA specialists, and so many more. You can even get expert advice on specific questions you're struggling with in your family history research. So go to patreon.com slash extreme genes and get signed up. That's patreon.com slash extreme genes. Now, I know those smoothies would taste great but they're not nearly as satisfying as discovering your family. The choice is yours. So get signed up right now. We look forward to helping you out. And thanks for supporting Extreme Genes. Legacy Tree Genealogist is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've worked with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client-rated genealogy firm. Call us toll free at 1-800-818-1476 or register online to get a free estimate. Right now, you can save up to $100 on professional genealogy research. But hurry, this offer expires at the end of the month. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com slash blog. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. Hey, it is time once again for Ask Us Anything on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show and ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, your radio root sleuth, and my guest today is my good friend, Dr. Scott Woodward. He's a professor at Utah Valley University. He is one of the DNA pioneers who once drew my blood from my arm just to prove that this whole DNA thing might work. When was that, the 90s? Or was that the late 80s, Scott? Uh, That would have been... Well, it would be in the 90s. In the 90s. the 90s. Somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah. I remember you got my wife, you got me, you got yeah. a bunch of our friends, and it's like, what is this going to do? And yeah. uh, look what it has done. And so here's our first question, Scott, and this actually might take the, the entire two-segment part here. The writer, whose name is also Scott, says, I have a paternity question that dates back to the early 1800s. How far back is it possible to prove paternity? Oh, that's a great question, because it's one that actually we had at the very beginning of trying to put genetic genealogy together. How far back can we go to reconstruct family histories based on DNA? Mm -hmm. And we've been looking at paternities for a long time, and the first usual tool is to use the Y chromosome. Right. Uh, You know, do you have a direct Y chromosome link? The problem with that is that it can only answer questions that are male to male to male to male to male. And if you have that lineage, you can go back a lot of generations. I mean, we can go back a couple of hundred, maybe more years with real accuracy. But you don't know how far back the link comes in, the common ancestor through that, do you? Right. And that's a problem. And it doesn't rule out brothers or uncles, like in the Thomas Jefferson case and things like that. And so the real question we had is, can we use autosomal DNA to reconstruct not just the paternity, but also on the mother's side? So can we look at the parents 
a number of generations ago and determine whether or not these are, in fact, the correct parents for an individual. And I should say here, by the way, for people who aren't real familiar with DNA, autosomal test is the standard test that you get now from Ancestry.com and Family Tree DNA and 23andMe and MyHeritage. Correct. Yeah, that's the one we're talking about. And we just published a paper, actually, on a case like this that goes back just about 180 years to the parents, asking the question, who is the correct father in this family? And we've been able, using that autosomal DNA, to identify the correct father in this family. And this is not a male-to-male-to-male-to-male case, obviously, or you'd be using more Y, but you did it through autosomal, which makes me think, okay, for people who aren't familiar, once again, the further back you go, the less and less DNA you share from a common ancestor with people. So you had to have a lot of different people who you believed were descended from them in order to reconstruct what you thought the parentage might be, right? That's correct. We actually looked at 56 individuals from the two families. Did you reach out to them to do the tests, or were they people who had already tested? A little bit of both. We actually reached out to a couple of hundred, but it turned out that of those couple of hundred, these 56 were the most close-related to the question that we had, and so we'd stayed with them. Some of those had already been tested on their own. Others, we encouraged them to do a DNA test, and then we were able to collect that information and and do the analyses. Wow, this is good stuff. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to be back in three minutes with Dr. Scott Woodward talking about determining paternity using DNA going back 180 years. When we return on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chartmaster's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chartmasters today at FamilyChartmasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chartmasters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multi- Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to transferduplication.com. Genies, it's Fisher with exciting news. The Weekly Genie, the official newsletter of Extreme Genes, is here. It's your Monday morning briefing on what's happening in the world of genealogy and family history and on Extreme Genes. Get all the details of jaw-dropping stories of discovery and keep up with the latest techniques in family history research. Get to know more about your favorite Extreme Genes personalities. And it's free. Sign up for the Weekly Genie now at ExtremeGenes.com or the Extreme Genes Facebook page. And when you do, you'll receive David Allen Lambert's top 10 tips for beginning genealogists from the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. Sign up today for the Weekly Genie.
Hey, we're back at it, talking DNA on Ask Us Anything on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show, and ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, your radio root sleuth with my special guest, Dr. Scott Woodward from Utah Valley University in Orem, Utah. And uh, Scott's a DNA pioneer. We were talking about the question here that's been asked, how far back can you prove paternity of an individual? And they had somebody back in the early 1800s, and you recently had this kind of case too, Scott. You were talking about how you came across like 50 some odd different people to do the match with and that's really the only way you can be pretty certain right when we get back the deeper we get in the past the more individuals we usually need in the present to piece all of this together but out of the 56 individuals that we tested it turned out that it only took really six of those individuals to really get the majority of the answer, the bulk of the answer, we were able to get through just six individuals. So that's not bad. So they basically had a higher percentage of DNA than normal for that kind of distance. What are we talking about, six or seven generations? Yeah, we're talking seven generations, six generations separation between these individuals who are living today back to their common ancestor and back to today. And so these average six or seven generations. And we had others that were eight generations apart that also add some information to the story. But these six individuals had the bulk of the information, and so we used them and were able to solve this question of paternity. Were you trying to disprove paternity or prove paternity? Both. And that's where this study is really interesting, because not only could we rule one person out, but we could also identify an individual who was the most likely father of this family. Wow. So often we're just trying to rule somebody out. But in this case, we were able to rule that person out and find the real father with a really high probability. So in answer to the question, you can really go back quite a long ways. How far back would you be comfortable saying you could do this? I mean, you're at 180 there, 180 years. What would you say you could do accurately? Yeah, it's the number of generations that are the important part. So we're talking about six generations separation between these individuals that are living today. To the closest descendants, right? Right. And I think there's some cases where we might be able to go back seven and eight generation separation and still get fairly high numbers. And so depending on how many years per generation, you know, we may be back almost 200 years in some cases. Wow. Haven't seen one of those yet. Haven't, haven't worked on one of those yet, but I think it's probably within our reach. Okay. Because, you know, my wife's side, we recently had a find where Y-DNA identified a couple of matches that came from the same couple in Pennsylvania, but it was the autosomal tests that showed at least a dozen different matches that came through different children in that line. And the father in that household was born in like 1755. Yeah, that's the power with the greatly increased number of pieces of DNA that we can look at with the autosomal. And it's going to allow us to reach back to 250 years. It's pretty exciting. It's great stuff. He's Scott Woodward. He's a DNA pioneer. And thanks so much, Scott. And thanks so much to our listeners for the question. If you have a question for Ask Us Anything on any topic, just email askusanything at extremegenes.com. Well, we have reached our limit for this week. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you got a lot out of this. Boy, there was so much to cover with DNA, talking about through lines with Gretchen Jorgensen from Legacy Tree Genealogists earlier, and of course right now with Dr. Scott Woodward. If you missed any of the show, you can catch it, you can share it with your friends, you can review it. Just listen to the podcast at iTunes, iHeartRadio, and ExtremeGenes.com. And by the way, if you haven't signed up for our patron club yet, there's all kinds of bonus material waiting for you there, and it's a great way for you to support the show. Hey, thanks again for listening. We'll talk to you again next week. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family. 